Final Cut is finally coming to some iPads. We've been talking about it forever it seems, and now, all of a sudden, with no warning, Apple drops it on us on a random Tuesday. iPads with the M1 or M2 chips will be able to run what seems like a pretty full version of Final Cut, even adding some new stuff which we'll be coming to shortly. And Logic Pro is also coming for anything with an A12 Bionic or newer. And what will these cost? $4.99 a month each as a subscription. When I suggested moving to a subscription model in the past, everyone absolutely lost their mind. We want to buy our software! But $4.99 a month, or even better, $49.99 a year, which means it's cheaper than buying Final Cut on the Mac until you've been using it for a full six years on subscription. Now I'm just gonna say it, this is gonna blow up the user base. Being able to try it for a month for five bucks, bargain. Young people, students who don't have 300 to throw at it in one go, amazing. I'd be very surprised if this pricing option doesn't get offered on the Mac too. Maybe even paying it will get you access on both platforms. Who knows? In terms of new stuff, there are new titles, new audio, new camera features that let you shoot ProRes video directly into your timeline, text animation, and you can even write directly onto your video with Apple Pencil and it will animate it for you. And if you're adding this subscription element, Apple has a great incentive to keep making the software better and add new features over time to keep people on the platform and paying their money. And if Apple does do that, it's an even better value for everyone using it. So I, for one, am actually really quite happy about this. I don't know how on earth it would work, but we've also been hearing that Apple's reality headset will run almost all iPad apps. So are we gonna be getting video editing in AR after WWDC? And if Apple's enormous software event just a month away didn't have space to talk about the biggest software release they've done in years how packed must this event be there's also been an indication of real pro camera modes that are coming to the iPad 2 specifically for Final Cut so I think the chances are those camera modes will also be coming to the pro iPhone models so you get a lot more fine granular control when you're doing stuff. And if you're excited for WWDC2, smash the subscribe button now and we'll get to your questions from the comments. James Apple asks, will the Mac Pro be revealed at WWDC or at an event later in the fall of this year? So my thought on this is, yeah, WWDC is the time to reveal it, whether it's actually gonna go on sale yet or not, another matter completely. I think we're more than likely to see it, find out how it's gonna work, because I think it's gonna be important as a development platform for Apple Reality, more than likely, but I do think it's gonna be coming later in the year, possibly around September, October time. Uh, December is also a possibility because that's what they tend to do with Mac Pros. And also from James Apple, with the three nanometer chips getting delayed with TSMC, does it spell doom and gloom for Apple not getting A17 and M3 chips with three nanometers out the door quick enough? And we've definitely heard that there are issues with TSMC and getting the yield that they need from the chips. The latest that I've heard is that they're getting around about 55% uh, yield on these chips, which is not great. Number one, uh, the Mac chips are not a huge amount in terms of volume of uh, chip production. You're talking about maybe 8 million Macs a year and 120, 200 million maybe iPhones. Uh, remember as well, the regular iPhones probably won't be using three nanometer. There is gonna be a decent chance, and I think this might be the way that they're actually going, uh, that A17 goes to three nanometer and the M3 is actually not nat three nanometer. I think it might be the N4 node, which is five nanometer really, but with some improvements which is what the A16 was based on last year. I think there's a re really good chance that that might actually be what's happening. And that's why we haven't seen people talking about M3 uh, or, or seeing M3 as they expect it to be in the, uh, in the benchmarks and the leaks that are coming through from developers. I think that's the M3, but it just doesn't look different enough from the M2 for them to be able to tell. So I still think we'll see M3 at WWDC, I just, I'm not convinced anymore that it's actually gonna be three nanometer. Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers, what's the latest on watchOS 10? Also, do you think Apple will skip the Series 9 name and call it the Series X? I think if they were gonna do a, a Series X, that's what the, uh, the Apple Watch Ultra would have been. I think they're just gonna go with Series 9 because it is just gonna be a continuation. We are hearing that the, uh, the S chip inside is actually gonna be faster this year for, for the first time in about three or four years, which is gonna be nice. Um, is it gonna make a huge difference? I don't know. I don't imagine that there's gonna be a huge leap in uh, what the Apple Watch can do. However, 
uh, Watch OS 10 does seem like it's going to have uh, some big changes in terms of the interface. It looks like they're going to move away from that honeycomb grid and move towards something along the lines of what Glances used to be, where it's kind of a widget based system for different apps. That would be pretty cool, uh, and maybe you can use that to launch into the regular apps. But I think Apple's realized that people are not just installing watch apps as such, and they're just basically using whatever their iPhone decides to add in there for notifications and stuff. Team Kinetics asks IK answers, what's a rapid security response and should we be concerned? So yeah, over the past couple of weeks you might have seen a rapid security response coming up on your iPhone. Uh, basically installs like a software update, it's much quicker uh, and it doesn't really matter, I don't think, which major version you're on, it can basically sit over the top. These are designed to be rolled out quickly when there is a security vulnerability that has been discovered and Apple is able to then patch it across the board very, very quickly. These uh, can update as well separately from the major updates. So this is basically a very quick way. Should you be concerned? No, because the whole point is that this is fixing issues that might have become a problem. Otherwise, when you get concerned is when they don't bother fixing them. And Evan Rogers asks, handheld gaming portables seem to be on the verge of mainstream success. Will Apple ever release a dedicated gaming handheld? If so, will it allow Steam and Epic stores? This is a tricky one, but I don't think they're gonna do anything completely dedicated. Uh, just as I've said in the past, I don't think they would do a dedicated gaming handheld, I don't think they would do a dedicated gaming system, I don't think they would do a, a gaming version of the Apple TV, I don't think they need to because all of their products so far can do extra stuff, what would be the point in having something that is specifically dedicated to that? We've got iPad, what they could do is decent controls that can go on either side of the iPad, sort of Nintendo Switch style, a uh, little clip-on um, game controllers, I think that would be a really good thing for Apple to uh, look into at a reasonable cost. And when we're talking Apple, reasonable cost, I don't know, sub $100? I think that would be pretty uh, compelling, especially if it could also be used with iPhone, give it some sort of magnets that uh, can clip into it. I don't know, that's the sort of thing that I think would work really well for Apple. Doing something completely dedicated as a handheld just doesn't really make any sense because why would you have one device for that and then not be able to do other stuff on it? I think the analogy I've used in the past is the idea of a dedicated video editing computer that Apple would make, but you then can't write notes on it or you can't you know, do word processing or you can't watch a video on it. You can edit videos but you can't listen to music. It, it would just make no sense to just limit something arbitrarily like that, as far as I see it, because Apple isn't gonna be creating specific chips and specific hardware. And I really don't think, unless the law changes, as Europe might be really trying hard for, that they will put third-party uh, app stores onto their devices. And in all honesty, if that's what they're gonna force them into, it's probably gonna make them less likely to make something gaming-y just so that other people can make money out of it. And that's it for this video, guys. If you've got a question that you want answered in a future show, hashtag iCape answers down in the comments section. Don't forget, uh, you can join our Patreons. Thank you very much for your support, guys. And um, I still don't really know what the Patreons want in terms of extras. So if you've got some thoughts, leave them down in the comments too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.